All right, everybody. Welcome uh, again. Um, my name is Chris Bladen. I'm local solution architect for um, AWS. I'm local here in Birmingham. And with us today is my uh, comrade in arms here, Saurabh Jain. And we're going to present to you just kind of a, an intro to AWS um, machine learning and specifically around the, the no code and low code options for machine learning <clears throat> and building models um, with artificial intelligence in AWS. So I wanted to just start out in case, in case people don't know, just for a little uh, kind of primer here on what exactly AI is and the, and the kind of terminology that gets kind of thrown around in AI just to um, familiarize everybody with that. <clears throat> So obviously AI is a way to describe any system that can replicate tasks that previously required human intelligence. And this is almost always uh, related to some kind of complex decision-making where, where human judgment is required. Most AI uh, use cases um, today are looking for some kind of probabilistic outcome, making a prediction or a decision with some kind of level of uh, certainty or uncertainty, <clears throat> similar to how um, human judgment works. Almost all AI systems today are created using machine learning. And so that's what we're gonna show today. Machine learning typically uses a data, typically a lot of data um, to create and validate some kind of decision logic. And that, that decision logic is called a model. <clears throat> the, um, the AI application then when it's deployed and in production, then you're feeding data to that model and then the model outputs human-like decisions, hopefully. And finally, deep learning um, is, the, uh, is a subset of, uh, of, this, uh, machine, uh, of this kind of broad category of machine learning. And that uses a technique known as deep neural networks. <clears throat> and these systems replicate how uh, human brains actually function. And, uh, that allows the systems to address more complex use cases um, that were previously not possible with, um, with sort of conventional logic or um, older AI algorithms. <clears throat> so let's just kind of look at what the different types of uh, machine learning are. And, and there's kind of three different categories. There's supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforced learning. <clears throat> supervised learning is where your data set that you're going to use for training, you have some kind of data set, and it has what are called labels. And, and so take, for example, the case where you've got a bunch of pictures on the internet, and, and you want to train an AI model that <clears throat> is going to tell you if it's a cat picture or not. So in your training set, you would need that training set that's got a bunch of pictures, and then you need a label on that, on that data for each picture that says whether it's a cat or not a cat. And so that label then is used to um, um, train the model with that label so that it can predict whether um, a, a, any given image is a cat or not. And then when you run the actual uh, production data through that model, now you don't have the labels now. And then the, the model is actually trying to predict what that label is in that case. Is it a cat or is it not a cat? <clears throat> so you typically see this kind of um, uh, supervised learning in like they show here in spam detection, um, in uh, customer attention or customer uh, engagement prediction, things like that. And, uh, and also um, you can, uh, uh, the, the case I've used it the most is in what's called regression um, training and regression uh, prediction. And that's typically where you're trying to predict a, um, some kind of future uh, 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 value, some kind of future numeric, a uh, future numeric value. So the thing I've done a lot is when I worked at the um, United Health, I <clears throat> I was using a regression model to predict the future costs of a of a patient or a member for the um, health insurance company. Um, unsupervised learning is is a um, is the case where you uh, you don't need or have labels in the data, the data itself has enough information in the data in order to build the model um, just based on the data itself. And that's typically clustering. So um, I was trying to come up with a good example of what clustering is, but it's 
Um, it's basically where you take the data and you're and you're trying to um, and, and it's and it's kind of widely varying data and you're trying to uh, quantize or build it into in, in, into buckets. It's, it's like you're trying to kind of quantize and categorize it into these buckets. So that's what a clustering algorithm is. <clears throat> and then finally, reinforced learning is a process of of uh, punishment and reward in a model. And so you teach the system by punishing it and or rewarding it. And that's uh, typically used, you'll see this a lot in self-driving cars uh, or like robot AIs or things like that. <clears throat> we have a, um, AWS has a, a, a program that's called, that's called AWS Deep Racer. And in that particular case, um, one of the techniques for training your little Deep Racer program is using uh, a, a reinforced learning model. All right, um, so let's talk a little bit about what the machine learning pipeline kind of looks like when you're um, um, throughout the entire process of machine learning. Up here in the upper left, this is kind of hard to see. I did not draw this, but um, for some reason, my eyes have a hard time sort of seeing this. But up in the upper left corner, you got the, the first process is the business problem. So typically, obviously, you're going to say, okay, what's the business problem we're trying to solve? What how are we going to um, how are we going to use some kind of AI model to solve some kind of business problem? Then you're going to collect some data that you're going to use for the training process, um, and then then you go through this kind of this kind of uh, um, iterative looping process where you you evaluate the data, you um, you extract features, and, and I won't go into that. Um, maybe Sora will go into it when he does the demo. But you run your training, you tune the model. And then you evaluate and you just keep doing this back and forth until the model achieves some level of accuracy that you're looking for. Then once you've got your model trained and tuned, th then you can deploy that into a production um, case. And now you're running real actual data to it. And then you're, you're asking um, periodically as you go, you're saying, is this model actually uh, achieving the accuracy or is it predicting the things that I want it to predict? Uh, accurately in production on on real data. So um, the the AWS machine learning stack itself is kind of broken into three categories, and I'm going to use as Sarab gave me a good analogy that I'm going to use here, and that is if um, and as the case of if you if you want to buy if you want to buy butter, or uh, I mean, or if you want to use butter, the easiest thing to do is just go to the store and buy butter. And, um, and 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 you don't have to know anything about how to make butter or anything, but it's just kind of like there for you, and you can just you know consume it. Um, in the second case, you you could if you wanted to, you you could buy some milk and you could turn your own butter, um, and that takes a little bit of extra effort, but you've got a lot more control over the process of actually turning the butter, and so you've got more control of the outcome. It just takes you longer to do it, and sort of more. More tooling to do that, and and at the at the most um, uh, a resolute case, you can actually buy a cow, um, feed the cow a bunch of grass, milk the cow, then get the milk, then turn the butter, all that kind of stuff. So that's like the most amount of control, and but it's also the most work that you have to put into it. So to translate that back to the uh, the AWS ML stack, <clears throat> you can kind of see it down here at the bottom where it says ML frameworks and, and infrastructure. That's all the kind of core um, set of tools that um, that you can do, along with the ML services up here. Um, that that's kind of like um, the most uh, resolute uh, a tool set, the broadest kind of tool set that gives the AWS experts uh, or that gives the uh, the data scientists experts all the tooling that they need in order to build. Uh, um, the most uh, uh, um, sophisticated models. So you can, um, and, and, and at the bottom, you can see there's a bunch of technology there and I'm, I won't go into all that stuff, but you can kind of see that that's what the, um, uh, um, all these technologies here at the bottom are enabling the really skilled expert data scientists to do their work. And then, and then as you kind of move up in this picture, you get um, more and more, uh, um, uh, easier uh, tooling to use, requiring less and less uh, code, but that require, uh, uh, but by removing um, a lot of that kind of detail, 
you have to kind of um, you have to kind of go with the conventions and the things like that that are set up for the um, the, the specific AI tool that you're going to use. And so that's what we're going to concentrate on today. And that's what Saurabh's going to show you later is these kind of top level machine learning uh, tools in AWS that allow you to uh, train models without having to code. Um, so you can see here, um, now to kind of look at this, um, going from, from left to right across the top, you can see there are these different stages of AI um, uh, model development. Here uh, on the left, you've got the, the preparation stage where you're exploring your data, you're looking at the data, you're, you're extracting the features, meaning kind of like the variables that you're gonna wanna use in your model. Next, you go into a model development uh, phase. Next, you go, uh, you train and you tune that model. That's that sort of iterative uh, process we talked about before. And then finally, once you're satisfied with the results, then you go into a deploy and kind of production uh, management mode. So the tools that you can kind of see here, this is where these tools kind of cover um, in, in the AWS um, a, a tool selection. It shows you what these tools are kind of covering in this process. So you can see here that um, Amazon SageMaker Data Wrangler helps you in that first phase of, of data exploration. Um, so that means extracting features and um, helping you explore your data, helps you eliminate kind of anomalous data that maybe um, is bad data that's not gonna uh, work well in your training. And next you've got uh, uh, a second capability um, is called autopilot. And, um, and you can think of this as kind of like auto machine learning capability. It allows you to take a, 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 a tabular data set and then automatically create a, um, a set of data preparation pipelines it develops different ML models and it considers a big set of hyperparameters. Eventually it gives you, you back the most optimum connection, a, a combination of those. Um, as you, and, you, and you can see in the slide here that auto, autopilot covers those first three steps of the, of the ML workflow. So pre, the prepare stage, the build stage and the train and tune stage. The third kind of low code option here is called jumpstart. And, um, and and Saurabh's going to show that um, if, if I can, um, if if he can get to it, um, if I stop talking, um, it's got over 300 pre-trained um, models for computer vision, natural language processing, and you, you can think of it as a, a very quick way to quickly tune and build up your own data. Um, and it uses a um, and it, it, uh, using sort of a UI type um, environment for training your model. Um, there are other similar things online, um, uh, advanced models like GP2, GPT-2, BERT, ResNet, and these um, can uh, allow you to leverage and uh, very quickly tune uh, models in a matter of minutes. The last on the bottom here is the no-code machine learning capability um, that's called SageMaker Canvas. And uh, so SageMaker like Canvas, it expands um, uh, the um, access to machine learning model by providing typically business analysts or people with um, uh, without coding skills with a visual point and click interface. And that allows them to generate machine learning uh, predictions on their own without requiring, like I said, any kind of machine learning expertise or having to write a line of code. Um, and with that, I, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, a, 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 you know, just a little sort of like uh, um, next step, or I mean, I don't want it to sound like a sales pitch here, but um, AWS offers a number of kind of like next steps for all these kinds of things. If you're thinking about getting into the AI um, space, um, we have a number of trainings and acceleration programs to help you kind of get started on your ML journey. Um, we uh, can conduct workshops, for example, to help you identify best use cases for your business. And we can kind of work with your team to develop a proof of concept through the um, Amazon ML Solutions Lab. And uh, and we have um, our uh, Amazon Machine Learning Embark program, where which is an in-person uh, training for, uh, program for both business decision makers and and technical staff. So it's it's great for developing a, a proof of concept. 
And lastly, we have our professional services team and, and they can, um, uh, and, and machine learning partners as well. And they can do end-to-end -end development and take your machine learning applications into production. Um, so uh, for the companies that are ready to start building and deploying their AI use cases, then AWS offers this broad set of AI services like we talked about to add capabilities um, into their business applications. Um, again, um, in a lot of cases without you requiring to have any ML skills at all. Uh, and then lastly, um, with the companies that all prefer to do their own machine learning models, then Amazon SageMaker provides uh, the highly skilled data scientists to build, train, and deploy machine learning models at scale. Um, and um, and then like we talked about, SageMaker Canvas allows the business analysts and demand experts to create um, their own models with little or no code and little or no machine learning expertise. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Surab. So Surab, I'm gonna stop sharing and let you take it away. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Okay. You have to stop sharing. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, uh, sorry about that. There we go. How's that look? Yeah, that works now. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharap, uh, and today I'll be giving the demo or talking more about uh, different platform or different services which AWS provides in terms of low-code, no-code machine learning capabilities, right? So as Chris shared this slide, what I'm going to cover is just I'm going to quickly tell you is the first thing I'm going to cover is Canvas, which going to work like from a business analyst perspective, how you can create a model quickly, pass the data set, look at the prediction. Then to the gem stat is different models which are already built. And last, if the time permits, I'm going to be walking through autopilot is like how you can use autopilot to train your model or to build the model around the data sets you provide. Mm -hmm. So without wasting time, let me jump onto the SageMaker. So the service which basically provides all of this together is called SageMaker. So you can imagine this as a bunch of toolkits or tool sets which help you in building your machine learning capabilities. So it could be you training your model, or it could be you providing the data set, or you building end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline in terms of deploying it, in terms of training it. So you get all of those together in this service, which is called Amazon SageMaker. So just to give you a high level idea what SageMaker is, it consists of a studio, which is basically your main tool to build the data set, to uh, model the data set to train the data set and to build a machine learning model. Then you have Canvas, which is our low code, no code machine learning platform, which I'll be taking you through. And the last but not the least, different ways to basically process your data, like your jobs, your training models, right? And then also, we also have Marketplace. So if there are some algorithms you want to buy from Marketplace, or there are some data set you want to buy from Marketplace, you can do it all here. So that's brief about SageMaker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Studio. Uh, so this is Studio, which is helps you out in basically building machine learning models or uh, predicting. So what it does is really it creates an instance on the backend once you, once you launch it. So I've already launched it. So you can see the instances here, right? Now this has two kinds of flavors. One is a Studio and one is Canvas. So First, we're going to look at Canvas, and then I'm going to jump onto the studio when I'm going to show you the jump start. So let's go to Canvas here. It will launch this site for me. So this is SageMaker Canvas, which is basically a tool for business analysts or people with no coding experience. And they just want to be, play with the uh, a business a machine learning model, or they want to predict anything with the data set then this tool can help them out in predicting that. So if you look at the screen or if you look at the navigation here, there are two kinds of uh, navigation here. One is a model and one is a data set. So what, what you're really going to do is you're going to import a model. So, uh, sorry, import a data set. So that data set could be anything. It could be your banking data. It could be your customer data. You want to do sales forecasting or you may do want to do prediction, right? As as Chris was sharing in his slide about different kind of machine learning, like uh, supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning. So this only tackles to the needs of supervised and unsupervised. So it doesn't get into the reinforcement learning because it's a base model and you're just basically passing the data set and trying to predict if the model is working or not 
and you're not allowed to basically play with any backend parameters of the model because you're not coding here anything, right? So simple is if I have a data set, I'm going to just click on import and then it either you can upload your CSV file directly here using upload or you can use S3 to basically pass your uh, uh, CSV files. So here I'm going to use S3. I have some files already sitting here. So I have a I'm going to just show a use case around uh, around the banking uh, banking prediction. So this is a banking data sitting with me and it has a field called customer deposit. So here what I'm predicting is looking at this data, which customer will make a customer deposit in my bank. So that's what I'm predicting. The probability a customer making a deposit on my bank or uh, in terms of like using any of my services with this data, right? So I'm just gonna select the data set and click on import data. So once you import the data, it comes here, right? So it's gonna probably take a minute uh, to import the data. And once the data is imported, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the model. So you can see the data is imported. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to models and say, hey, I wanna create a new model. I'll just make it banking data set, click on create, and then I'll I'll be just, so here, uh, it depends upon you, right? Uh, so this, this model you are creating is creating as a training model, right? Now, once you have your model created, you wanna use a different data set, you can use it to predict it. But for now, I'm gonna use the same data set which I imported, which is bank marketing data. I'm gonna select this data set, And once I select the data set, it automatically uh, gives me all the columns there. Uh, what are my columns? Uh, what are their data type? They're missing, like how much data is missing, like the data is correct or not, unique, the mean or mod, if this terms matters to you in terms of analyzing uh, what needs to be done next, right? So this is the basic stuff here. You, you can't basically clean or clear the data here or before pre-processing it but it still gives you a high level idea like, hey, what data set you imported is a clean or clear data set or not, right? Then you can choose a, basically a target column. So here my target column is Y because that's where I wanna choose. Uh, like, hey, I wanna do a, uh, if this customer gonna deposit money in my bank or not, right? And when you choose Y, it automatically uh, creates a model for you. It, it, it basically predicts a model like, hey, you're gonna have a model, your model is classify Y into two categories or two category prediction. Like in case you don't like this, like, hey, I don't wanna play with this model. I wanna change the type of the model. So you can come here and change the type. Like, hey, you can say three plus category model type or a numerical model type, depending upon your need. So you, you have the capability, you don't have much option, but you still have the capability to basically change it depending upon your need. And then what you do is you just, click either you can preview the model like what it's gonna do or you can just click on quick build and it will build the model for you here so this this takes around 2 to 15 minutes of time depending upon your uh, data set what kind of data set you provided or what's the size of the data set so for for just the sake of the timing what i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just show you the model which is already built up so here you can see i have a model which is called banking not not this one in building I think it would be this one. Yeah, two category prediction. So you can see it shows me uh, the accuracy of the model with the data like, hey, uh, there is 91.709% of the time this model will be accurate. And then I can look at more of around my impact of uh, duration or prediction of why, like what, what would be the impact once I provide the data set quantity like 1355 or 1551. And this is the F score, which we call in order to predict what what is basically the probability this customer will go or this customer will come, right? So this, this is briefly about different, uh, I would say different variable around the models. Then you also have a scoring like, hey, how many, how much you provided? What's the scoring? Yes, incorrect, correct, actual. So that's that's a brief about here. Now, once you have analyzed the model and think like, hey, this is the right, this is where I wanna go and predict, it's predicting stuff for me. Then you just click on predict. Now here, 
you can provide a different data set. Uh, so it could be another data set which you want to provide. But for now, I'm going to use the same data set. But in ideal scenario, if you don't want to use the data set which you use for training, you can basically uh, select a new data set here and uh, provide it here. So I'm just going to click on data set and say generate prediction, and it will start generating predictions from me here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you this one so that that gives you a better idea. So you can see the prediction. Hey, the probability this customer will say no is 99.6%. It's 99.8%. Wherever there will be us, yes, it, it, it will come here. Like you can download it and then you can either play with the graphs or uh, if you want to play with any other visualization tools, you can do on top of it. You don't have visualization here, but you can still use this data set with QuickSight to do more prediction on top of it. You can also do a single prediction is like uh, taking a particular customer and analyzing more deeper into it. Like, hey, why this mod this giving this, right? So the no or the pays or education, depending upon that, if you want to do more kind of deeper uh, uh, analysis on it, you can do it here. So that's brief about Canvas. Uh, I'll stop here and see if anyone has any questions before I jump onto the jump step. I have a little question. Yeah, sure. So um, you've got it. You've had these data sets that you're managing locally, and is there a is there any mechanism that I'm missing or that I've that I've that has been that hadn't been like shown yet that says here's how we manage the data that we're pushing in or is that outside of SageMaker's capability at all? Like, um, so, like I, I reckon, go yeah, ahead. I got it, weird question. So here you don't have that capability to basically play with the data set. You are just telling the SageMaker canvas that, hey, this is the data set, go and create a model out of it. I got you. Okay, so, so this, what is it's all, doing this, this is all data has three yeah. then, right? Yeah, okay. I think we, you raise the right question and the right path. That's the next thing I'm going to show you, like how you can use SageMaker, basically the thing on top of this to basically pre-process your data, reformat your data, and play with it. Cool. This Thanks. is more of, a, I would say, identifying if the model is going to work or not, rather than you creating your uh, machine learning like end-to-end -end pipeline here. If that makes Thank sense. Thank you. Yeah. It does. Thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to the next piece then. I think you set the stage for it. So we looked at Canvas. Now, if I move to my presentation, I'm gonna move to the Jumpstart now. So Jumpstart is basically, you already have some model built up, uh, like BERT model, or there are a bunch of models I'm gonna show you there. Uh, let me launch this studio here. So we did Canvas. Now I'm just going to do Studio here. So I'm just going to click on Studio. And this is more of if you have to work with machine learning uh, before. It's a, just a Jupyter Notebook, uh, which has different functionalities. So it's a flavor of Jupyter Notebook uh, provided by AWS. So it has a bunch of functionalities. Like it has, you can you can have your GitHub repository attached to it. You can have your instance running or every, everything. You can see it here. Then you can basically do a slide type or advanced tooling here, right? And then you have this jump start here, which is coming here, right? So that's, I would say it's a flavor of a Jupyter notebook more meant for a, a AWS or Amazon SageMaker. I want to show you one more thing. So here you can see a get started window. So it has a bunch of stuff. You have your jump start, which you can use the models which are already built, use it and play with it. Then you have something called autopilot, which where you're telling like, hey, I have the data set. Now you go and figure it out, which model is the best for this data set or which has create, created a accuracy or confidence level. So this would, this would do that for you. Then you have another capability is basically to import the data and play with your data before even sending it to modeling it or before sending it to create a machine learning model on top of it. So that's more of a data wrangler thing. So I'm gonna show you that also. So that's brief. Now, what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna show you how you can use Jumpstart. So here on this screen, you can see a Jumpstart here and then just browse Jumpstart. And then you have different models here. So depending upon your need, 
it could be industry wise or it could be depending upon the model wise like you have corporate credit rating prediction that's model already built up you just pass your data set and play with it or you have cat boost regression or if you want to look at the uh, solutions you have fraud detection corporate credit rating explain credit decisions so these are some of the models which are already built for you and if you know like your business scenario or use case you can you can just choose one of this model and the beauty of this is it does allow you to set the hyperparameters or tune the model uh, depending upon your data set so what this is doing is it's not getting you or letting you write the model from scratch at the same time what it is giving you the capability is you choose your model but you tune the model depending upon your need depending upon your data set whatever you need so that's brief about uh gem start but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna choose i'm just gonna show you a model which is already built up i already built this model okay this true uh, can i can interrupt one here for one second yeah sure so when i would if i if let's say for instance that i had a a series of models that i'd built and i built them all up but they show up in jumpstart if i had like this squad of uh of of data scientists that I meant to hand this off to, could I to, can I get them onto my Jumpstart page for those folks to consume directly? That's a great question. I think in your scenario, uh, I don't think you can add it here. But what you can do is you can create your own model and create the endpoints. Like you see here, model endpoints, this one, and then give the access to that endpoints for those guys to basically utilize in their uh, wherever, wherever they are utilizing it. Exactly that, sense. thank you. Yeah, so here like it's just creating an endpoint. So I'm telling the model like, hey, I wanna use a distro Berita based model, right? This is Berita based model, which is, which is more for NLP, natural language processing. So I basically go and deploy that model or let, let's just open one. We're, gonna, we're not just gonna train it, but still I'm just gonna do BERT. Restrictro. Uh, it should where it is. No. Let's choose anything. I, I was trying to see if distro base model is here. Yeah, I'll just do. Base case. So what you can do is you get a bunch of stuff here, right? Deploying the model, train the model. So here uh, you can enter an S3 location bucket here and say, hey, go and train this model. Like I just pass a file which I have for passphrase data.csv and just click on train. So it will start training your model. And once it trains, then you can look at the result and go and deploy that model, right? So it's, cool. it has trained this model. You can set the hyperparameters here depending upon your length like bed size epoch you don't get much to play with but still you get little to play with around the model like what you're what you really want to do it if that makes sense right but if i have a bunch of those models right let's say i have a bunch of models and i have a bunch of data and i want to like kind of multiplex the way that it all ends up i could keep adding a new model and keep giving people endpoints to those models to where i had uh, and then let people smarter than me figure out which ones are correct, right? I yes, just, that's correct. Build yeah. them out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can do that. I think I passed the wrong file for this, so it it failed. <laughs> it, it it the the model was for distro uh, distro bird model. The file was for distro bird model, and I passed the wrong file just to show you guys, right? So this basically you can go and deploy the model. So what I did is I went ahead and deployed already. So uh, just to on the interest of time because it takes at least five to 10 minutes of time to deploy it. So what this model is doing here, so look at here, it's identifying like, hey, if I pass a, a, a sentence, then what is the probability that the other sentence which I am also passing are meaning the same? Like, how can I change my contact details? Then I'm passing another thing is, can I change my subscription status at any time of the month? or how should I handle missing deliveries or what is the return policy for orders? So basically you are passing an FAQ to it and trying to identify if those FAQs means the same, like if the customer is asking for the same thing with different wordings, right? So if you look at here, 
it shows you like, okay, my prediction level is 97% confidence, right? Or it has, uh, it has no relationship. It has a matching question or no relationship, no relationship, right? So that's, that's how I built it. If I just want to summarize how this whole thing is flowing is the first state I'm doing here is I'm choosing my model, which I want to choose or which I want to run. And then in that model, I'm passing my data set to train it. And then once I pass my data set to train it, I'm looking at the parameters or hyperparameters to identify like, hey, is the training right or not? Or do I need to change any parameters? Once I do that, I rerun the model, right? And then once that's done, then I go ahead and deploy the model and then start using that model using this. So the way you use the model is, is called endpoint. So it creates an endpoint here. So if you look at here, it has an endpoint here under deploy. Oh, should we have endpoint here? Hold on, let me, yeah, this is the endpoint. If you look this, this is the endpoint of it. So it, 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 it has an endpoint, which basically you are passing here and then using it to predict it um, in your scenario. Like, hey, this word, if this pass FAQ, if I'm passing any other FAQ, does it mean it's the same or not? So this is more useful around the chatbot thing. Like if you are having a chatbot and if you wanna identify if a user is asking something, does it mean the same, which I already have an FAQ related in my uh, database or in my data, data set or repository. Any questions on this, you know, on the flow or on the what Jumpstart can do for you? If anyone. Okay, uh, I think we just have 10 minutes. Uh, I would say just five minutes. So what I'll do is I'll try to show you another way. We call it as autopilot. So if we go here, before autopilot, I wanna show uh, a data wrangler piece. So let me see if I can open this. So data wrangler is more uh, around before even you process the data or before even you uh, try to model the data, you pre-process it. You basically play around the data around mean, mod, or there are a bunch of stuff, like there are more than 200 stuff. So if you look at here, uh, this my data flow should be here, I think. Hold on. I should have a data flow here. Just, just give me a sec. Data Wrangler should be here. So you can choose like from where you wanna push your data set. So here I'm choosing S3 bucket, I say studio and then not studio. I can choose like, I wanna use this one. I think this has data, yeah. Clone default classification. I can import the data set from here, depending on, I'm just figuring out, I already have an import created. Just wanna show that one. Just give me a minute, I'll show that. Here, yeah, here we go. Okay, I have this one created. Okay, so you can see here, I have, I can pass the source. So I can say, hey, my source is this file loan part two. I have another source, which is loan part one. And then I'm saying, hey, go and combine these two sources. So I can do a join, right? And then once I do a join, I wanna play with the data set around uh, pre-processing it. So you can add multiple transforms here. So you can say, hey, I wanna, I can do, I wanna join custom formula, balance the data, future engineering, group by handle missing data, manage columns, more than 300 plus kind of pre-processing. So just imagine if you are writing this code without AWS in a Python-based notebook, you are basically writing the code for all of this stuff. But with AWS, you get all of this functionality pre-built. So you are just playing in plugging with the data set and saying, hey, I want to remove the columns or I want to like, let's say I want to manage the columns. I want to drop a column or I want to duplicate a column one way, right? 
or another could be right hey i want to calculate the uh, mean or anything like vectors uh, here so it's more of getting into detail but you have a bunch of stuff which you can do without writing code and saying hey what do you want to do with it so once you do that then you can just pre-process the data and then push that data into the destination folder which can then lever be leveraged to basically go and uh, create a model on top of it so that's one thing here right which is uh, uh which is of uh what i say to basically analyze and pre-process the data now there is another thing here which is called hold on i'll show you which is called get data insight so i can add analysis on it or let's say here come here so i can add an analysis without without even uh, going or writing code for it if i want to analyze it like i want to create a graph or i want to like different kinds of graphs here data quality visualization i can do that time series graph looking at the data set like hey what 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 it's doing analyzing it before even getting into the model so those things can be done here another thing it provides is you can run a model on top of it so you can basically train a model uh, with this before even getting into an actual model training or something like that just to see like hey if this data set will work on my model or not or if it's giving any error before it moves to the actual model training or model uh, of the data set so that's brief about uh, uh, what you call as uh, data wrangler which gives you the capability to pre-process the data uh, before even moving it to a machine learning code or training into a machine learning model any question here uh, anyone so just to answer your question previously this is the place where you basically pre-train your uh, pre-process your data stuff uh, to move on to the actual model yeah i can see that thanks yeah okay cool yeah. uh yeah, Sorry, but... I was going to ask a quick question here. Just um, do the you, you're showing the data. Um, it's kind of like you're taking the data that you've uploaded here, right? And then you're dropping it into an S3 bucket. Is that what's happening? Yes, that's correct. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the raw data from my S3 bucket, or there are multiple sources you can use, not just S3 bucket, right? Oh, okay. Uh, okay gotcha. uh, oh, I you see, can add right. test. Yeah, you can export it. You can join it. There are multiple ways you can expo import the data here. Okay, and then right. what I'm doing is I'm just transforming that data and yeah. moving into a destination. But right then, back to S3. Okay, yeah, got yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then I can just use this to train it. So I think just quickly, I'm just going to show you a autopilot thing. So you can here come and uh, choose your data set file. And it basically runs all the models on top of it. And then with those models, you can decide which is the best model and then use it for prediction. So that's called an autopilot is uh, AWS runs a bunch of models for you on the back end, uh, depending upon your data set automatically. And then you figure it out which model you want to use depending upon the accuracy. And then you can predict on top of it uh, or you can use it on your prediction. So let me show you if I can show that metrics here. So this is one of the model which was the best model chosen. So it, it gives you all the metrics here, the parameters, what, what was used, the artifacts it created, uh, and also the bias or explanatory report like, hey, why this model was chosen, what was what was the reason for choosing that model. And then once you, you decide which model you want to use, what you can do is you can uh, use that model to basically go and predict on top of it, right? So here, I'm just using a loan default model and then I'm predicting if a person can pay them money or not, uh, depending upon the data I'm providing it here. So, hey, if the loan can be fully paid or if the loan cannot be fully paid, uh, depending upon the type of data I'm providing here. Okay, uh, that's all from me, Chris. Uh, I think we covered this piece. We covered the jumpstart. We couldn't cover a lot of on autopilot, uh, but that's, that's one of the very... Uh, widely used capability of machine learning and very robust thing is you don't have to decide which model to use. AWS is running for you the models. And then once it runs the model, depending upon the confidence score, you decide which model you want to choose and which you model one you want to run for or which model you want to build on top of it. So that could be another way to think on it is like before even you're choosing how to build it, you're running AWS and saying, hey, give me the best model which I can use 
to basically build my use case or to run my use case. Okay. Uh, hey, sir. I'm it's about to ask you a question. If people wanted to just kind of get their feet wet and start and then progress through this journey, would you say is the is the place for them to start would be with Canvas? With Canvas, is that the is that kind of like the place that everybody should start if if you're unfamiliar with everything? Yes, I would say Canvas. And if you're a little bit technical, then I I would say the best place to start is Jumpstart. Okay. Okay. So jumpstart and the data wrangler. Like if you're a little bit technical and you're familiar, then these yeah. two things are the best thing to start with. Uh, okay. The reason is the canvas doesn't give you a lot of capabilities. It still helps you out in predicting, but if you want to do more on a machine learning side from a technical perspective, then this doesn't serve a lot of purpose in terms of that. But right, if you're you just looking from a business yeah. side perspective, then yes, canvas is the first go. Right, because with Canvas, you don't have access to the model as, at all. Whereas with Jumpstart, you actually, it gives you the access to the model and then you can tweak it, right? Yeah, it, it gives you access to the model. At the same time, it helps you decide which model you want to use, right? In Canvas, oh, right. it doesn't even help you decide which model you want to use. <laughs> oh, right, right. It automatically yeah. predicts yeah. for you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm, yeah, cool. That's well, all from my end, Chris. Over to you. Any other questions from anybody else? For, for Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, um, any other questions from anybody else? Uh, we got like two minutes. Um, I hope. Uh, um, so, Mike, I, uh, Michael, you asked the questions, right? Uh, around the pre processing of the data set? I did. So, are you having any use case you're working currently, or it's still, you're looking at getting into this? Uh, I'm just interested in it. I don't. I don't have any actual use cases, but I have a lot of experience dealing with data and how uh, screwy people get when they uh, when they make many, many copies of a data set and don't understand what yeah. happens. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> no, I mean, if you want to get into more of this, like feel free to connect with us. I can walk you with some of the resources. But yeah, Data Wrangler in terms of pre-processing of data is a good, good, is a very powerful tool, I would say. Because I have Thank dealt you. with Jupyter what? Notebooks writing those Metplotlib graphs and it's it, it doesn't work sometimes. Like I have to basically write the code to create a graph. No, it's not my my cup well, of tea. It requires some discipline that that a lot of people don't don't yeah. don't implicitly get. 